Hello and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne and Mickey Flanagan, Miles Jupp, Hugh Dennis and Stuart Francis. No, there's no Russell Howard tonight or for the next few weeks because he's off working on the next series of his show for BBC Three. But we start, as ever, with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of the Labour leadership containers, but what does L-B-I-T stand for? Is it uh, local boy band includes transvestite? <laughs> Is it, lady? is it lady between identical twits? <laughs> <laughs> is, it my, um, is it my dyslexic friend's favourite sandwich? <laughs> Fish fingers. <laughs> <laughs> is it about is it... Diane Abbott's dress? Is it leopard butchered into toga? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, uh, is it lads, boys, introducing token? <laughs> Politics there. Oh, politics there. Oh, on is a, it, on a like, similar note, liking Blair is treason. <laughs> yeah. On a funnier note, um, <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to back it up now. Uh, is it? Look, Barack initiated this. <laughs> the people have spoken. <laughs> Are they going for the youth vote? Is it Labour blinging in it ting? Is it an advert? Is it uh, L'Oreal because I'm turgid? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it to do with the white streak in David Miliband's hair? Is it, look, it's a badger, I'm telling you? <laughs> Do you know what the correct answer is? I'm looking at, well, it's, well the, the, on the left there, they've got red ties, and on the right, they've got blue. I'm thinking Labour, Labour becoming increasingly Tory. <laughs> Oh, God, this, uh, leadership <laughs> battle is tightening. Yeah, absolutely. I will, yeah, we'll, I'll give you that if you want. Yeah, that's close enough. Well done, Mickey Flanagan. That's close enough. Yeah. <laughs> the answer I was in for was leadership battle increasingly tight. This is the news that the race to become the next Labour leader is going to be an extremely close call. As the contest enters its final week, the latest YouGov poll for the Sunday Times has put Ed Miliband ahead of his brother David, but only just Ed comes out on top. Only after voters' second preferences are considered with David leading earlier on. But frankly, I could have substituted any of those names at any stage during that sentence for all you would have cared. <laughs> uh, one of them is going to win. Uh, so has the race grabbed you? No. It's frightening us in the East End because we've been here before when we've had two brothers trying to look for power. And <laughs> it can get very nasty, I'm sure. It, it is a shame, though, isn't it? You've got two brothers fighting it out and you're thinking you surely should do what, you know, parents do with brothers anyway. You should let them share it and if they can't share it nicely, neither of them should have it. <laughs> and there's only one thing that it should happen then. The Labour leadership should go to a charity shop. <laughs> yeah. if, if my surname was Miliband, I would name I would not name either my sons Ed or David. I would call one of them at least the Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so they would be the Steve Miliband. <laughs> if you were fighting your brother for something, wouldn't yes. you? You would be tempted if it all got down to being a bit dirty, you'd be tempted to go, well, I am the right man for the job, I've got the right answers on the economy, and what's more, out of the two of us, I wasn't the one aged 13 caught cracking one <laughs> off the buffy the vampire. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't say that, though, would yeah. you? Like, no, we you need someone with leadership. We need someone with vision, someone who's going to take the bold decisions. You do not want someone who was 17 before he touched his first boob. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we need much more <coughs> you at the bed. Uh, <laughs> how, so, but how has it become personal? I think it's all going to be well, nasty with um, one, of the, one of the brothers uh, saying that the other one was uh, like Forrest the Gump. Do you want to take a guess uh, which one was? He was very successful, though, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is the one on the right the one that looks more like Forrest Gump? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it was reported in the Telegraph this week, it's what's being said in David Miliband's camp that Ed Luck is Forrest Gump. Now, whether it's the physical resemblance to Forrest Gump uh, or his tendency to attend historic world events and not really know what's going on. Uh, <laughs> is it because he said in his conference speech, he said what Labour needs is Boba Shrimp? 
But these guys, the, the Forrest Gump was one thing, you know, it is, do, people fear that the family, they couldn't work for each other if one of them, were, if one of them won. It's all going to get very personal. They Has Christmas. Jedward not taught us anything? <laughs> In, the, in that famous book, Jedward, A Lesson from History. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, but why? Seriously, Jedward, why? They are. They're strange. Uh, <laughs> on behalf of the Irish nation. No, seriously, why? <laughs> so, uh, Ed's camp have been calling David a geek, haven't they? And yes, he they has said, um, I'm, I'm not a geek, uh, and I'll answer that question in a minute. I'm just playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> Who's been lending their support to David Miliband? Patrick Stewart. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you want to kill any impression that you're a geek, don't get <laughs> Captain Picard to be, <laughs> to be a notable supporter. Like, you can imagine Patrick Stewart coming going, he's the candidate set to stun. <laughs> <laughs> I believe he will reduce the deficit at warp factor three. <laughs> It's not just him, though, is it? It's, uh, there's him... Uh, Ross Kemp. And there's Ross Kemp. Ross Kemp? Yeah, Ross yeah. Kemp supporting David Miliband. Phil Mitchell's supporting the other one. <laughs> <laughs> and we just hope that he's not giving... <laughs> <laughs> if Ross Kemp is giving them advice on how to get on again after their relationship has collapsed, you're in big trouble, aren't you? <laughs> well, I'll tell you how to do it, David. What you do is you sleep with his missus, you plan an armed robbery, don't forget to shoot us. Remember, blood is thicker than water, you slag! <laughs> Why would you never in these standards? Me? <laughs> well, listen to my voice. I think. <laughs> I don't know. I think of an episode where a landowner comes around. <laughs> uh... One of you. <laughs> one of you, I don't know which, has been stealing my pheasants. <laughs> Could be a Christmas special. <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting you should say that, though, but if you look at Andy Burnham, right, <laughs> Ed Balls and the Milliband brothers, they're all white, male and middle class, you know? And then basically, you've even now got David Cameron last week saying that he was middle class. This is the man who's actually married to the daughter of a baronet, went to Eton and is a cousin of the Queen. <laughs> you think if he's middle class, most of us are halfway up a chimney going, <laughs> just a little bit... <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> Sadly, uh, Ed Ball's biggest celebrity backer is me. Um, I, I've always been behind Balls. <laughs> <laughs> I am now. <laughs> well, Ed Balls, Ed Balls, you know, is... <laughs> Ed Balls is, is most well known for being Gordon Brown's closest political ally. Yes. Good luck with that one, then. <laughs> <laughs> More chance of him becoming leader than, you know, a member of Hitler Youth becoming head of the Catholic Church. I know! <laughs> Other news, what's going on here? Is it uh, the gay porn version of the Blair Witch Project? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it a Paris Hilton sex tape directed by Ken Loach? <laughs> <laughs> These are the Chilean miners that are stuck down the Chilean mine, appropriately enough. <laughs> Really a lot of people have been watching this over the summer and thinking, my goodness me, Chilean Big Brother is a little bit extreme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is footage of the... Well, there's 33 miners down there, only 32 of whom are Chilean, actually. Sorry. There's one Bolivian as well. <laughs> the other one has a jumper. <laughs> 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 You're chilly! <laughs> If one of your loved ones is down there, you can now get state aid in Chile. And apparently, for one of the miners, he's had four women claiming to be his loved one. So he's now going to be nervous to come to the surface, isn't he? <laughs> They're going, you can come out, and you know, you're going, oh, I'm staying down here. <laughs> Not safer down here. Do you know the weirdest place they've received a message of support from? Joseph Fritzl's place? Not Fritzl's <laughs> place. Is it from... <laughs> is it... Uh... Is it from... <laughs> Is it other miners from Australia? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they, they dug through. Oh, yeah. hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> no, they've got a message of support from the astronauts on the International Space Station, okay. uh, who are in a similar-ish kind of a situation, because they're up there and they're down there, and, you know... I don't know. I don't know how far that friendship can go. <laughs> uh, one are up and the other are down, if they all get together for a party and go, oh, we... Oh! <laughs> 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 I think 
thing is as well, they're being said cigarettes, they're having music sent down, films. They're having a better time than most people in Weatherspoons. <laughs> Actually, they send a message of support to people in Weatherspoons from... <laughs> <laughs> Cheer up. It is a serious issue, but I, and, and they're, they're, you know, they're in great discomfort, which I hardly think is going to be alleviated by the fact that they're being sent down things like a picture of Elvis. So which is one different. of the things that was sent down the tube to them was a photograph of Elvis. Well, there was a note from somebody's family <laughs> saying, don't worry, you'll be as famous as Elvis, is yeah, what they wrote. Just imagine, oh, what have they managed to send down thousands of feet through the tiny hole? Oh, look what it is. Oh, it's a picture of Elvis. Great. <laughs> Any chance you could maybe send down a picture of a woman, maybe? Because <laughs> we're all starting to look pretty good to each other down here. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to get paid while they're down there. No. And not... I don't know who has screwed more minors, either the Chilean <laughs> government or the Catholic Church. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. The points at the end of that round are to Miles, Hugh and Stuart. <laughs> now we play a round called The Wheels and the Popemobile Go Round and Round. <laughs> This game involves Stuart, Mickey and Miles. If you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch the Wheel of News and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winners of everything is the funniest. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel for the first topic. The first subject is transport. Who wants to come in that? Miles. Yes, uh, transport, public transport. Why is uh, public transport so horrendous? Uh, well, the clue is in the question, isn't it? It's the public. You're, you're horrific. <laughs> I, uh, I, do... <laughs> I don't take public transport terribly often, but uh, sometimes I do it for a dare. <laughs> <laughs> some, some friends and I once had a competition to see who could stay for the longest on a night bus without vomiting. <laughs> Although, once I got on the bus, it was quite clear that all the other passengers were involved in a similar competition. <laughs> None of them were doing terribly well. Um, <laughs> my seat had a sign next to it saying, this seat is particularly appreciated by the elderly and infirm. Yeah. Certainly smelt like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a journey. Every time somebody pressed the stop button, it pinged. The oik sitting next to me stood up because he thought his McCain's microwavable chips were in. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. Uh, anyway, while I've been speaking, I imagine a lot of the ladies in here have been uh, looking at me. Uh, possibly. You know, you're thinking, is he or isn't he? Um, well, I've got to be honest with you, ladies. I, I am looking for a cleaner. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is marriage. Who wants to come in on that? Stuart. Uh, I'm not married. If I was married, would I be able to do this? <laughs> <laughs> For that long? <laughs> I am married. My wife and I met at a castanet class where we clicked. <laughs> <laughs> That's not entirely uh, funny. No. Um, <laughs> We actually met in the museum, and the rest is history. <laughs> Fourteen more. Um, no, we actually met at a driving range where we hit it off. <laughs> Can't be true. No, we, uh, we, actually, uh, we actually met in a library. That's novel. <laughs> Ooh. No, uh, actually, Wayne Rooney introduced us. It was a no-brainer. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm not married. <laughs> I am married, that's why I'm wearing the ring. Oh, no. <laughs> it must have fallen off in that hooker. <laughs> Anybody who's married knows what I'm talking about when I say this, that you really find out about someone after you marry them. Like, for example, my wife doesn't have a peanut allergy. No, it turns out she has a... <laughs> penis. <laughs> that's it, she has a penis. <laughs> Okay, that leaves us with Mickey. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the subject is parenting. Ah. The, um, um, a few years ago, my wife and I had, had a baby. Well, we didn't have it straight away. We had to cook it up for a little while. And uh, <laughs> so she suggested we go to these classes run by the National Child Birth Trust in our local area, the very middle class, antenatal classes. They're run by this fascist 
breastfeeding woman. Uh, <laughs> it's basically, you can go to her home on a Tuesday night, she's breastfeeding her nine-year-old son during the session. <laughs> Awkward. All the men are checking the cove in there. It's come away up there because they should have put glue both sides. That's... No, she's still doing it. What are you going to do? <laughs> and uh, I think by week four, she's running out of ideas. So she started on the men. She said, I'm going to ask the men this evening. The men. The men are coming on board. <laughs> How might they benefit by giving birth to the baby themselves? <laughs> Can we talk about those benefits? Now, there's six of us in a circle. I'm in trap three. Not the best position. <laughs> the worst one either. <laughs> Chap number one's in the best position. He said, oh, he said, if you gave birth to the baby yourself, he said, you'd have an empathy with womankind and her struggle over the centuries, creating a great relationship with your partner. I was thinking, oh, cobblers, I was going to use that one. <laughs> Chap number two dug in, fair enough. He said, oh, he said, he said, well, if you gave birth to the baby yourself, he said, you'd have a bond with the child at a more primeval physical level. Started crying. Nice touch. <laughs> Mother Earth looked at me, I'm having a panic attack. <laughs> it's all gone a bit hazy. <laughs> she said, Michael? I said, well, at least you'd be 100% sure it was yours. <laughs> OK, yeah, that round. Of course, we'll make it time again. Next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Miles, which category would you like? Uh, home news, please. OK, your category is home news. The answer is animals, candles and alcohol. What is the question? What things do you roughly require for an evening of amateur flambéing? <laughs> <laughs> is it, what is a cracking night out in Western Supermare? <laughs> is it, uh, describe Susan Boyle's birthday party? <laughs> Is it a birthday? Come on. <laughs> is it, what's Lady Gaga wearing this week? <laughs> is it, what are the first three aisles in the Kazakhstan Lidl? <laughs> <laughs> what three things can you now fit up Ricky Hatton's nostrils? <laughs> yeah, you, you said that to him if you want. Um... <laughs> what, are the, what are the only things that a young Conservative remembers about his initiation ceremony? <laughs> Is it the chapter in Dara's book that details his honeymoon? <laughs> <laughs> Is it name three things you shouldn't put in a Buddhist? <laughs> 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 what is the most poorly named Earth, Wind and Fire tribute act? <laughs> is it the new Credit Crunch pizza at Pizza Express? Have <laughs> <laughs> you, you got the right answer? <laughs> yeah, I think this is a, uh, part of a list of things that you're not allowed to take to the Pope's prayer meeting in Hyde Park. That's correct. That very right? good. Well done. Thank you very much, Hugh Dennis. <laughs> The question I was looking for was, what items are amongst those banned from the public events that Pope Benedict XVI will host during his visit to the UK? The items have been banned because they are considered to be a threat to others. The four-day papal visit, which began today, is the first in 28 years and we will see the Pope taking a whistle-stop tour of the UK, visiting Edinburgh, Glasgow, London and Birmingham. I love the fact that they're considered a threat to others, but Catholic priests are allowed in. <laughs> Well, it's a weird list. It says you can't take uh, barbecues yep. because there's going to be a picnic. You have to actually bring your own picnic, for those of you who thought that the Pope might bring five loaves and two fishes. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing is, if, he's, if the Pope sees all that white smoke coming out, he'll think they found somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> you can't bring uh, whistles. You can't. But it doesn't, you know, party wreckers, don't despair. <laughs> You can take a Vuvuzela. <laughs> Do not have to bring whistles because apparently the uh, Pope still suffers from shell shock from the war, although you feel less sympathetic when you know which side he was fighting <laughs> on. <laughs> Another thing on the list was gazebos. Yeah. Gazebos? <laughs> Who does the Pope think his is, uh, pilgrims are? A bunch of mindless fools? <laughs> Well, he does look in that photograph like he might... I don't know if he's praying or whether he's saying the man from Del Monte, he say yes. <laughs> All we hear is... Where do you all go? 
Although, may I mention, Here. Freddie Mercury is burning in hell as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Which celebrities will be involved? Tony Blair is going to meet him, apparently. Yes. Tony Blair. I mean, given that there's so many protests against Tony Blair and there's going to be protests against the Pope, having them two of them together could be quite interesting, couldn't it? You know, the Blair's there talking to the Pope and all these shoes are coming over, <laughs> heads coming over, and the Pope's going, piss off! That's <laughs> popular than I am! <laughs> You're dragging me down here, man. You're dragging me down. You're doing all right here. I I mean, I'd, whole... I'd manage to get over the Nazi pedophilia thing and Blair. <laughs> Tony Blair is actually... One of the things that Tony Blair's going to do, along with attending beside him, uh, is he's going to apparently have confession with the Pope, you know? Mm. Uh, what are the chances he's going to say anything at all? The Pope's going to go, <laughs> have you uh, confessed any sins? And Blair will just go, look, the evidence that we had at the time... <laughs> <laughs> Many protests aren't there. I mean, he has come out and said he thinks condom use is sinful. And you think this is the man who's never had sex. How come he's advising how people should have sex? It would be like me advising people about shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> it's an idiotic idea, isn't it? I would love to see that ad. Well, I'm mean, too. <laughs> because I'm worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 the Pope, <laughs> the Pope, and also Winston Churchill. Uh, <laughs> what two essentials is the Pope bringing to Britain? Oh, no, he's bringing two. It, I think this is right. Is he, he bringing candles and alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> he's bringing two identical Pope mobiles. Yes. And in the back of one, there's a sticker that says, "My other Pope mobile is a Pope mobile." <laughs> There are two Pope mobiles that he has, uh, which apparently can do 160 miles an hour, but probably not when you add that <laughs> box to the top of it. <laughs> be hilarious. Uh, okay. Hold on there, Papa. Uh, 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 can you imagine how young the Pope would look if it yeah. suddenly accelerated to 160 <laughs> yeah. miles an hour? Also, it would go a lot faster than that if people weren't chasing it to get the ice cream. <laughs> I hope he's got a nice loud stereo for this for when he does the Peckham part of the route. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it also it, do, it does that rolling. It just <laughs> <laughs> the light comes on under the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's that? <laughs> what merchandise on sale in conjunction with the Pope? I'm hoping yeah. it's the same lot as last time. There was last time he came. There was unofficial merchandise. There was a. It was obviously it was in the 80s, wasn't it? It came and you could buy um, you could buy soap called Pope on a Rope. <laughs> And there was a garden sprinkler system called Let Us Pray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the puns have been keep going. Along with the tantrum, because the Catholic Church loves a bit of merchandising. Um, they, 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 you know, from relics down, they love a bit of merchandising. But they, uh, this is the uh, Benedictophone. Uh, <laughs> that you, you can record messages onto. What a lovely country. I haven't been here since the war. <laughs> 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 what a lovely country. I haven't been here since the war. <laughs> and uh, you can also get a make your own Pokemobile. <laughs> so, <laughs> come back, come back. <laughs> well, I missed my good. Uh, don't go away, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. That looks demonic. <laughs> hello. <laughs> He, he, it is worth noting that when this gets broadcast, the Pope is actually in the country at the moment and maybe sitting in a hotel room after a long gig. Let's <laughs> uh, turn on the television. What's this? Ah, oh, greetings in Papa. Hey. <laughs> oh no, I. Ah, oh, pfft. Ah! <laughs> 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 yeah, that, uh, the Pope's going to Mickey and Landy. we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, please. I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. <laughs> OK, here we go. The first subject is unlikely lines to hear in a kid's film. Oi, Shrek! Have you been upsetting Colleen again by shagging those prostitutes? <laughs> Garfield, what are you doing in that bin? <laughs> E.T., I'm pregnant. <laughs> Where's Nemo? Look inside the batter. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I'll just put my clothes back on. I thought you said chitty chitty gangbang. <laughs> 
Mr Von Trapp, I'm here from the council. We've had complaints about some terrible singing coming from your <laughs> house. <laughs> so, he asked all five of you if you would like to look round his chocolate factory, did he? <laughs> Mary Poppins, I arrest you on suspicion of supercalifragilistic sex trafficking. <laughs> <laughs> King of the Swingers, nice to meet you. I'm King of the Doggers. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Nanny McPhee, that was not the big bang I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> I am Bambi, son of a murdered mother, husband <laughs> of an endangered doll. <laughs> My vengeance in this life, <laughs> Okay, the next topic is things you wouldn't hear in a cookery show. Mm. No, no, that's definitely a poodle. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I brought along chicken tonight, but I'm going to have it tomorrow. <laughs> Smash the system. <laughs> So, finally, just pour on the milk, and there you have it. Cereal. <laughs> and remember, you must eat the brain to get their power. <laughs> a lot of people recommend washing your hands after handling raw meat, but it's just as easy to let a dog lick them or to wipe <laughs> them on a relative. Golden, Golden, relax. We're doing a bit of dinner, mate. <laughs> You're not sorting out the Middle East here. <laughs> so just boil for 15 minutes, and if there's still life in her, she's a witch. <laughs> Welcome to It's Late and There's Not Much Left in the Fridge. Today, we're going to be making onion double cream banana pasta ketchup. <laughs> the, uh, the unique flavour of the sausages is from a recipe from my missing... my wife. <laughs> Sir, if you want to give your bar snacks that genuine pub feeling, why not sprinkle them with urine? I'm Jamie Oliver, and in my new series, I'm going to be travelling the length and breadth of the UK in a VW camper. Welcome to Coco Van. <laughs> and believe me, these fried insect legs really are the bee's knees. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be making prune and sweet corn chickpea couscous. Cos I like to give my bowels a challenge. <laughs> Next, the ginger pudding. Anthony Worrell Thompson, what are you going to be cooking for us tonight? <laughs> so, I've been beating away for half an hour. But I'm just lonely. Let's get on with the cooking. <laughs> OK, yeah, the point goal of Mickey and Andy. the end of the show. This week's winners are Miles Jopp, Hugh Dennis and Stuart Francis. <laughs> Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne and Mickey Flanagan. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Darbreen. Good night. More Mock the Week next Thursday at 10. Snooker next tonight on BBC Two Scotland. All the action from the first day of the brand new World Open.